come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your, but it's not even really a movie review. A pod, it's a hangout podcast. Am I right? Where we sit around and we watch a movie and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure. Hey, do us a favor. Why don't you go on over to wherever you found us and give us a like, a star rating, or a review. All of that stuff helps us get found and discovered by other folks like you and helps us become the fastest growing podcast in the galaxy. We're getting bigger. Mm -hmm. There you go. I don't know where you go from there. Universe. Mm -hmm. That's right. We, we, we create, talked about that. Yes. Okay, damn it. We create, then we create our own universe, and we're well, also the fastest growing universe. That. Yeah. It's a yeah. multiverse. So, yeah. In the multiverse. Yeah. So. Okay, that's well, coming. Are right. gonna, if we create our own universe, are there going to be people in it? Like, or do we have to? Uh, that's up to us. <laughs> we get it's to, like a lot of we work. We get to we play like God. Dr. Man Couldn't Hatton we just on Mars? take over this one? Well, yeah, but that's, we're going to do that. And then yeah. after we take over this one, then what? where do we go next? We create another universe to take over. Limited cosmic power. Yeah. Some some lofty... Lofty goals here. We're already the fastest growing in the galaxy. We can't stop there. And you get to help us with this lofty goal. So, yeah, please, uh, you know, give us a, the rating, star rating, subscribe, hit the subscribe button. That's important. Hey, mm -hmm. who are you listening to? Who are the internet radio superstars? Holly. Moose. Michaela. <laughs> and I'm Colin. <laughs> that was a surprise. Moose. Sean. Uh, so tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Michaela. Uh, hey, Michaela. <laughs> uh, uh, I missed one week and everybody lost their goddamn mind. <laughs> <laughs> and so you picked what tonight? The Fanatic. The Fanatic. From the year... 2019. Directed by... Fred, take that cookie and stick it up your ass, Durst. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, uh, who the hell is Fred Durst? Yeah. He's the front man from, like... A founding new metal band called Limp Biscuit. Uh, new, that's new metal. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's one of the IMDb trivia um, things. The trivia like, did you know? Pathetic. He's in Limp Biscuit. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. One of my oh, also one of my favorites for this movie. I, I don't know, prepare yourselves. Mm -hmm. John Travolta wore a wig. What? <laughs> what? I you know I I don't Stop believe it. it. The best one. It. Stop it. Well, by wow. the way, John Travolta stars in this movie. Yes. Wow. This is uh, so as does Devin Sawa. That's right. That's right. So there's your main. Uh, is John Travolta on the wall yet? Our, our he has wall to of be. Fame? Well, he was in um, the Devil's Reign. Has anyone? Have you guys done oh, Face yeah. Off? Nope. No. How no. has Face Off not been done? And we haven't done. Uh, yeah, is John Travolta? Uh, we haven't really done a lot of Travolta. Yeah, because he doesn't. I really don't do, see his name. We wouldn't have done Carrie. He doesn't really do freak show kind of. Well, I mean, Carrie's like too, too phenomenon lof lofty. It's too on no the one's, nose. No one's brought yeah. Phenomenon. Or Blowout. Uh, I mean, Phenomenon, if there was any movie that was going to come, yeah, Phenomenon would it. be one of them, Yeah, I would <laughs> yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Blowout, absolutely. Ooh, I, I haven't seen Blowout. I really? Hear, I hear good yeah, things. Really I want good. You, for, think, for you think if there's one movie that's going to come, it's going to be Phenomenon and not Battlefield Earth? <laughs> yeah, that too. Battlefield Earth, yeah. Oh, come on. Ooh, yeah. Come on. It. Nailed yeah, it. Battlefield Earth. Wow. So that's, I mean, we are kind of charting the... Our Descent future of uh, <laughs> the career of John Travolta, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like everybody knows who he is. He's yeah. a, a, he used to be like a huge movie star. Then he had like a lull, you know, in mm -hmm. the '90s. Kind of, you know, look mm -hmm. who's talking. People used to say those like, movies ooh, are terrible. Ooh, he's in. Look, look who's talking. But he's topped himself recently. Like he had a career comeback mm -hmm. for a while. There, it mm -hmm. was like he was a bankable. Him and Nicolas Cage, yeah. right? Kind of had the ascent. The second wind in their sails yeah. ascent at the same time yeah uh and both of them have kind of gone off they into... have had very similar careers yes they really have is john travolta trying to follow nicholas is nicholas cage the trendsetter here he's absolutely doing it, yes. oh yes here's I, he's doing it way better i have a thesis about cages yeah, yes. Cage, is, Cage is way more successful at it. Just look at the number of output he has in comparison, you know. And and like people like the novelty of Nicolas Cage, where no one's really gotten on board with that with John Travolta. But I think I think with this movie, Travolta's thought is it goes one of two ways, right? I think he's thinking it's either my Rain Man and I get Oscars and all this stuff, or 
it's my Nicolas Cage. Oh my God, can you believe he's in this? Mm. And it has like a novelty for that. I think that's how he's looking at it. Mm. Well, he is in these movies. His choices recently. I mean, like, I guess the last notable thing that he did was the People versus O.J. Simpson. Gotti. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. notable. <laughs> it's notable Gotti's to us. It was notable. <laughs> it was notable to Gotti me. God damn it. Notable. Uh, three of us and went I and five saw it. Five that would agree with five me. Five girls. What are they? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, who knew? Yeah. Who, yeah. Have you watched it? No. Yeah. You, you son of a bitch. You gotta. <laughs> Honestly, Oscar worthy in comparison to this movie. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Open yeah. your hand. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah. we're gonna. We're I gonna mean, go in per- like Gotti is like feels like a prestige film in comparison like that movie had a plot like it was a, it was a zigzagging plot but it had one i thought you said i mean wasn't it i mean Gotti's a reviled film right oh like, it's people are not good it's terrible but, yeah it's terrible and it was like self-funded by somebody movie pass the, movie pass <laughs> it was this a movie one, pass movie this one is funded by Redbox, uh, yep. partially funded by red box and some guy named uh bill kirkenbrower what was his name catching ken <laughs> was it Bill Kenworthy or something like something that? Something like that. Yeah, Bill Kenwright. Yeah. I think it's Bill Kenwright. Bill Kenwright, Kenwright, whose name is all over this thing, and I am curious who I looked the him up. hell he he's, is. He's, he's a British theater and film producer. Okay. Wow. All That's right. it. Wow. He gets a logo. It's Ben he gets Bill everything. Kenworthy presents. Kenwright. Kenwright presents. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, he um, literally presented this movie. But yeah, yeah, his logo looks like like a law firm or it something, really you know, yeah. or like it it, someone said dentist. Like, yeah, yeah. I get dentist vibes from that guy's name and yep. logo alone. Yeah, there's like ten logos at the beginning of this thing because you know I figure everybody chipped in a little bit, and then mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, so this um, uh, comes to us from uh, Fred Durst, right? Mm-hmm. Fred Durst, uh, in addition to being with uh, Limp Biscuit, also. He's dir- yeah, he's directed two movies before this. Two yeah, full I, somewhere I read was like this is Fred Durst's. You know, this is his first time writing debut. and directing. This is okay. first time writing and directing, but he's directed two. Feature What's the films other before. movies? That he's uh, the Education of Charlie Banks, which is like a coming of age kind of story that was actually pretty like somewhat well. You saw well, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It You're was like, like a, yeah, of course. It I is. mean, it's it Fred was Durst movie, but that, it. well, it wasn't when it came out. It wasn't like this is a Fred Durst movie. It was kind of like a secret Fred Durst movie. You know, mm. they didn't advertise it as being like, mm. come see this because like the tone of that film, you would not expect it to be something he's directing. It's like an indie coming of age movie with Jesse Eisenberg. Mm. Like it's not, so it's not like this movie where it actually felt like a limp. It felt <laughs> like if Limp Biscuit was a movie, it would be this. Movie. Exactly. Yeah. The, it, it didn't have that banks or nothing. It's nothing like that. And then okay. this movie after that he did was called The Long Shots. He directed with The Ice Long Cube. Shots? Yeah, 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 with Ice Cube and Kiki Palmer. That and that's like one. a family what? sport comedy. Yeah, that's the one I was like, oh, I've heard of it. Like, that was yeah. a Fred Durst movie? Yeah. So he, okay, wow. so, and he did uh, a, a bunch of music oh, videos. no. Yeah. Look at the poster for The Education of Charlie Banks. <laughs> yeah. I know, I've yeah. seen the movie. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's very serious. Yeah, but I mean, that that's got like much more positive reviews than this movie well so, I mean, that was pretty well received at the time but i guess what i'm getting out of this because i don't know you know like his film like i mean like was the guy is he a film nerd does he like movies or whatever obviously he's a singer and then he ends up directing some videos he likes what he's doing there and he's like you know i want to make some movies and he gets you know so this is his third one in you know it's mm-hmm. like okay so clearly People are still, you know, there's a financial uh, pot of gold that is willing to cut checks and go, it's a Fred Durst movie and he knows what he's doing. So we'll give him some cash. Well, this is something. His dream. This is a movie that's been in production hell for like 10 years. This is something that it he's been trying to, be, to, he to get done for a long, long time. Long shots in 2008. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of puddle of mud. Mm-hmm. As you do. Yeah. I was going to say, he's, then, got, he's got touring commitments or something. He does. Um, and then, yeah, 2019, <laughs> The Fanatic. Honestly, I'm not real familiar with what Fred Durst does. I, you know, no. I'm not real invested you, you in his life, up? Colin. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Well, then I don't feel that out of place no. then because I have no, no. idea what no. the guy's up I, to. I stopped getting updates after TRL went off the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good 20, 25 years yeah. now. <laughs> I saw a photo of him with John. John Travolta, it must have been in promotion of this movie where John Travolta out of costume looks like a regular dude and Fred Durst looked like the little old man next to him. I'm like, who's that little? Oh, my God, that's Fred Durst. You know, um, can't stay young forever, Colin. I think he was still wearing a hat, a red hat. Yeah, I sure. Think. The, the red He's hat a commercial was a thing right now. Have you seen that commercial? 
It's like a car commercial where the woman is driving a really old car that there's a Limp Biscuit CD stuck in the CD player and it plays it over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen and then that. she sees Fred Durst crossing the street because she's like blasting Nookie and she's got like little kids in the back of her car. It's actually pretty funny. That's that's the only I mean, time I've seen it. I mean, the way it. you're saying it, I'm just like, this is pretty good. It's He's actually pretty pop funny. Pop culture item. Yeah. Fred Durst. Yeah, Mr. whether Fred we like Durst. it or not, he is. Yeah. <laughs> but he was the wearing reality. the backwards hat. Like, he yeah. still looks like Fred Durst, just older. All right. Uh-huh. You guys remember that tear he went on in, like, the when he was, like, at the peak of his popularity where he was just dating, like, A-list actors after actors, and you're like, how the fuck is this happening? Like, it was, yeah. like, Jessica Simpson and, like, Dude's Thora Birch and, like, yeah. just, uh, you name whoever, like, the celebrity of the moment was, like, Fred Durst was dating her. Yeah, I remember so the weird. controversy when he performed with Christina Aguilera at the VMAs. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Oh, man. He was just the good old for days. The oh, yeah. <laughs> she said he didn't get any? Or the cookie. <laughs> The cookie, oh. was it? Yeah, I can't remember. Well, that's no, the, that's no the, Nookie is it's the song. Nookie, yeah. The, the, and then uh, take that cookie and stick it up your ass is the next line. The, stick it up your yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank the you. The Cookie Monster <laughs> did a version of it. He did it all. <laughs> I don't think I'm kidding. Um, pretty sure that's a thing. I think awesome. you're right. I think that's the cookie. thing, right? I did I it think, all for the cookie. I'm pretty sure the Cookie Monster did that. I'm pretty sure you're right. Well, this movie is about a. A fan. About an hour and a half. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's about an hour and a half. It was. Right? 90 minutes? Is 90 exactly? minutes. Okay. Well, yeah, that's a good running time for yeah. a movie. Uh, yeah, so it's about a, a fan who obsesses over... His a, favorite uh, actor. Who's a star of either action films or horror films or both. Both. It's both. It's both. It's both. There was a banner behind him that said Genre. horror star and action star. Yeah. yeah. He's a star of space vampires. Mm-hmm. What yes. were some of the other ones like? I didn't catch. The I didn't catch it, the titles. Yeah. They just kept, they just kept showing kept that one clip. Space yeah. yeah, where he was Rico in mm-hmm. Space Vampires, yeah. mm-hmm. which he's wearing. I'm pretty sure he's just wearing the same outfit he was wearing the scene before. Oh yeah, absolutely. They just put the vest on him and said, "All right, we're filming this right now." Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So it's a low budget movie, is what you're saying? Yeah. It takes place in Hollywood, mm-hmm. where Moose is uh, Moose. We said Moose, right? Moose, is, yeah. Uh, is John Travolta, and he's this character who um, I we okay. So this is what I'm still trying to figure out. We know that he is a street performer. You know Hollywood on the the, the Hollywood Boulevard performers. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. He's one of those guys. He dresses up like an English Bobby, an English cop, and he affects a horrible accent. Which I always I'm. It's it's funny when actors who can do accents. Do the like I can't do an accent. Yes, like, that takes work because you know how to do it. Yeah, I, you know? what I found hilarious about that particular like path of having this character that he's playing is the layers John Travolta's putting on. Right, so he's got Moose. He's playing Moose, but he's playing Moose uh, yeah. playing a bad yeah, 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 yeah. cop. Like that's a bad English Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. That's why there's so much of it in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. This is why John Travolta wants to do this movie. Yes. Yeah. Right? This is part of the he's, thing. He's like this incept- is acting. He's incepting acting roles right He's now. wearing a hat that's wearing a hat, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a dream within a dream. Right. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about this guy, our character Moose. Like, how would you describe him? What? On the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're saying he's a little I think autistic? He is the spectrum. Yeah. Like, he is. The, yeah. They never explicitly say. Like, Say, but it's clearly something like that. They don't that, explicitly yeah. say anything in this no. movie. No. <laughs> Not really. Well, he lumbers. I mean, it's a, I mean, just as a character a choice. He, yeah, he, he rocks back and forth. He's very fidgety. He's breathless. He lumbers a lot. He wears he whines. bright clashing patterns. He has, he has ticks. Frequently. The yeah. ticks, the ear, the ear thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's uh, like a man child, right? Who's kind of in love with movies and movie actors. And Mm -hmm. he lives in Hollywood, so he wants to get autographs from everybody. Mm -hmm. But specifically, Hunter Dunbar. Dunbar, Mm -hmm. Played by the great, irrepressible. He's got to be on the wall now, huh? Devin Sawa has been in two movies, two Idle in. Hands, which we yeah. did in this. I don't think we've done We haven't done Final Destinations. We haven't done any Final Destinations. No, and now and then. I would love to do Now and Then, but Colin would murder me. <laughs> murder. Murder you. He would murder me. <laughs> you would go on the wall for different reasons. Just I would. your head. I would. Yeah, yeah it's true. Just Murdered. Worth it. And the plaque would say, she tried to bring now and then. (laughs) (laughs) Worth it! (laughs) We'd be immortalized forever. (laughs) What what other thing of Devin Sowers could we bring? Casper. Well, don't. Final Final Destination. Final Destination would be the one. We'll revolt. 
Um, Final destination would make the most sense. Little giants? No? Ah, no? I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. We went into this territory years ago. Let's not go back there. <laughs> well, what do we think? Let's not go of, back to our hook days. I would not. I'm curious what not. we think of this performance. Uh, like, what? Travolta's? Yeah. Um, I expected it to be worse. I did too. I expected it to be like unwatchable. It too. made me so uncomfortable, but it didn't. Okay, explain. Yeah, that. tell me what you were expecting. I guess I was expecting like a straight up offensive portrayal of someone I was with a condition more like Rain that. Man, yeah, probably. I think he dialed it back enough. At least in most parts, there were some parts it was like, well, that's not necessary. But like you thought he would be bad at it, or he would bring aspects to it that were just like super cringy. Both, both, super cringy, both. super cliche. You didn't mm-hmm. think it was cringy. It it, it had, is, but I expected it to be constantly cringy. Yeah, it had moments where because I was there like, were okay, moments that were yeah. also funny, like mm-hmm. genuinely mm-hmm. funny in his delivery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, lo- and looking at it, I and was like... And uh, in some yeah. cases yeah. also, yeah. When looking at it, like I was like, he's making choices that I don't disagree with. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I don't think anyone else would have played it much differently. Mm-hmm. You know exactly, I mean? yeah. 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 He's definitely like taking... John Travolta's taking this role very seriously, yeah. Oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. he's like really committing to it. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate all of that. Yeah, I'm for like, sure. he didn't phone it in. He didn't half ass it. Devin Sawa is pretty good too, but he also had to do a lot less. Yeah, you know. Well, this movie, a lot less. Oh, sorry, mm-hmm. you were going to say something. Well, I was going to say he gets to be the. We like you're saying his role. Devin Sawa's role is a little easier to pull mm-hmm. off. Right. In yeah. This movie. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, this movie is known, I think, is it's an internet meme, kind of, it's a, a pylon movie. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Where everybody just kind of like singles it out because it's like, you know, you hear advanced word on it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Somebody says it's a career low for John Travolta, and it's Fred Durst, who everybody I was going to say, first of, first of all, you hear it's a Fred Durst <laughs> yeah. movie, and you're yeah. almost like, wait, what? Fuck you, and it's got John Travolta, and he's playing someone on the spectrum, and he's, yeah. like, you know, it's a fan movie. Oh, wait, I'll give, you, I'll give you the levels. First, it's like, Fred Durst, it's a Fred Durst movie. Oh, John Travolta's in it. Oh, really? Devin Sawa's in it. Oh! That's, that's the levels you go through in hearing this and movie. Then, and Guarantee you, it. And then you hear it's basically like a dumbed down version of Misery, and you're like, like what? Do you like you start back over again? You're like, wait, oh, like, huh? I, can, <laughs> I can confirm when I read about this movie like a year and a half ago when it, when it was called Moose. Yeah, Holly oh, first that, told me about this. Yeah, that's actually like that is a spot on reaction. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's it. I'm not yeah, lying. That's, that's, that's exactly what that's, it was. Those are the emotions you go through when you heard about this. Yeah, movie. Holly found out about this movie when it was in pre production and told me about it. So we've yeah. known about it for like over a year. Like, and then we were like, making a movie. What? Because yeah. I didn't think he'd made movies before <laughs> yeah. when I heard about this. I didn't, I didn't know, know he'd he made had, the long yeah. shots. Well. Mm hmm. I heard about his like corn videos. Right, and he made he like did. fifty puddle of mud videos. He got to make shit. out with Halle Berry in a video. I remember for Gothica. You remember Gothica? Ugh. I remember Gothica. Yeah. They had a tie-in yeah, song. Like, of course and, it did. Yeah, it was just him making out with Halle Berry for oh, a while. A he directed. He's like, I have a great idea for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna make out with Halle Berry for yeah. three minutes. Um, so it has that reputation, basically, of being unwatchably terrible. It also. Um, had trouble at the box office. Yeah, didn't do well. <laughs> yeah, in the fifty-two all, theaters. I was like, it was yeah, in. two box offices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it made like it pulled in like three thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's the like temptation. It didn't even pay for catering. No, <laughs> kind of like cats. How much does right? this movie cost? Do we know? Um, I tried to look. The budget's not on the Wikipedia, which makes oh. me think that they're embarrassed by they how are. much this cost. It costs. doesn't seem like it's a, and it was filmed in Alabama, standing in for uh, Hollywood. Mm. It uh, doesn't look expensive. No, I would no, think no. you could do this for under ten million dollars, and three million of that it looks is probably tra- Travolta. Travolta. Yeah, it looks like a music video. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, though. If you go on IMDb and you just look at the posters of like the past ten movies Travolta's done, mm-hmm. like this one. Is far better. Oh yeah, far better. Because it's all those like direct far better to than VOD that stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, but I'm sure those had bigger budgets. Than, I'm gonna guess had bigger budgets than this. Mm. But this one at least like looked it's like intriguing. a movie. Yeah, and yeah, intriguing and just like all right, there's something to this one compared well, I think to all the other shit. Told me about this, but I saw I was at a convention in Chicago. Travolta was at and he was promoting and he brought the movie yeah. with him. So I think mm-hmm. that was this is one of those movies that you tour with yep. kind of thing. This is this him doing his Nicolas Cage era yeah. of his career, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Where he just kind of Cage has like what one movie a year that everybody talks about. Mm-hmm. Is the fanatic getting talked about maybe for some of the wrong reasons, but it's out there in the public consciousness. Oh, you know, absolutely. Apparently nobody went 
went to see it, but the theatrical run is kind of like an ad for the VOD streaming. Well, that's like kind of what you're saying about pile on movies, Colin, is that like, that's the thing. Like I feel like up until cats came out, this what like, this was the pile on movie for a couple months of like everyone just dumping on it on the internet, even though, as you said, nobody saw it. Mm -hmm. Everybody was dumping on a movie that no one went to go see. And like, yeah, people were giving cats shit for bombing really hard at the box office too, but a lot more people went to see that. And, but that's the current pile on movie. It'll be something else in two months, you know, and then that'll be the next thing we take a dump on. Deserve it or not, or no, we'll get to it, I guess. Well, I but guess you know, I watched the movie kind of with an unironic. Uh, I was watching it as a movie, you know, because yeah. I was like, I'd heard that it's bad, and so you're watching it, and I'm like, well, okay, I see what he's doing. Okay, this is a choice, though. This character yeah, is definitely. constructed from the ground up, and I was just kind of there's a um, there's like a meta uh, aspect to this movie because we know. That it's made by a guy. Or two, there's at least two people in this movie who deal, I'm sure, with fans uh, who have crossed the line in their lives Bill multiple Kenwright. times. Yes. <laughs> what, what I see if, where you're going. I see where you're going. That what if exactly. he is one of those fans and they're like, dude, we'll let you produce the movie if you just don't kill us. Oh, this is the, the next <laughs> That's, <one. yeah. laughs> But, which is as me- which is meta in a way I thought we were going at yeah. one point near the end of this movie. You yeah. guys were thinking way too much I for guess this. So. We're gonna pull but, out I'm like, are we going to circle that? around yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is getting real that weird. Was part of the deal that yeah. But okay, you guys know what Fred Durst and what Limp Bizkit and what new metal is like in general. Can you imagine the really diehard fans Fred Durst has had to interact with in his life? Oh boy! Can you imagine what diehard Limp Bizkit Fred Durst fans are like? No, I remember they, the ones that they're never like changed. they're in this movie. No, they're, yeah, like I mean, Todd, they're like Todd in the pickpocket. Yeah, that's exactly. What they're like. yep. But that's I guess because he wrote the movie. Well, he's credited mm-hmm. as a co-screenwriter, also a story story by. Him. But he wrote the this final is his script. passion project. Yeah, the dreaded passion project. <laughs> so this is my question. Uh, whenever this happens, right? It's like so. Fred Durst, wh- which character does he? identify with the most what like what's the inspiration Dev- for making Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa absolutely yeah, absolutely okay well then this is interesting then because that means that what he's doing is trying to psychologically get inside the head of the, the of his fans right and especially his most disturbed fans because he is presenting them in a way that's somewhat sympathetic yeah that's I mean, the problem with sad. this movie there's no protagonist in this movie Mm-mm. there's two antagonists fighting each other that sometimes have moments of empathy protagonist as far as drives the plot or that you as in a character that you identify okay. with empathize with yeah. follow through the movie there's not well, one that's no. moose i mean you know it's not because no, he turns into the villain in the end of this movie yeah but his actions make the movie happen he's the protagonist but he also it's his point of view that yeah. we take and then he's the villain of this movie and but then at the same time so is hunter dunbar there's no hero of this movie. Maybe protagonist is the wrong word. There is no hero. Of yeah, 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 there you go. I was like driving force and hero, two different yeah. things. Yeah, because you can't. There's places where Moose goes where you you, you know you lose the light. Well, uh, okay, you're going to jail for that. At some <laughs> point, he well, I mean, eventually he he kills a person. Uh, and yeah. that's never really dealt with. It's yeah. like well, the, it is well, in a different way. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. Unexpectedly, like, hey, we're just going to do this for the hell of it. Mm-hmm. We'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So his, uh, so this character uh, of Moose uh, really wants to meet his uh, hero uh, Hunter Dunbar, mm. and so there's like an early scene where oh, we have to talk about like he gets into a a a, a, a party small party that he gets into through his paparazzi um acquaintance he has like a niece (sighs) uh, girlfriend daughter i'm not sure no just a friend just a friend just a friend friend. this is the story's narrator why yeah she's the narrator she's literally doing voiceover throughout the whole movie and has like a omniscient perspective she sees things that don't happen in the narration Mm -hmm. that she wasn't there for we're not entirely clear of her relationship to moose and let's i'm saying zeroing in on that this is a movie where like he interacts with this girl who is Is she real 40 years his junior that too much 30 years she looks young she's a hollywood paparazzo 
She doesn't live with him, but she has access to his house and his refrigerator and all this other stuff. Is she real? Yes. Are we sure? Yes. This the, Think no, back on actually, this movie. No, is there's she nothing real? that actually indicates she's That's real. That's what I'm Because do we ever here. see her independently of Moose? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is she think real? you're on to something here, Sean. I don't think she's real. I'm going to call it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's Moose's Tyler Durden, huh? I think Tyler it's Durden. Or he, or he the, is the Tyler Durden, and that's his Edward Norton, I think I it's guess. some version of his conscience. <laughs> it would make sense, because she's always talking him out of stuff. There's nothing in this movie that can disagree with me. So Sean, Sean, write this article and sell it to Vice right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I'm going to say she's not real. <laughs> She seems like uh, she can't be real because she can't be. I, She's not. I can't buy that this guy who is so awkward, right, has this relationship, this very familiar relationship with this girl. Yeah. Well, but I don't it, understand but she kind of, it at she all. She explains it, though. She says, you find where they're at, and then I show up and take the picture. So she's using his, like, encyclopedic knowledge of where celebrities are and where he spotted them to go and take pictures of them to make her own money. She says that. She says, you find them, and then I take pictures of them. I would think that most girls her age would give this guy a wide berth. Well, yeah. yeah. This, I mean, this movie it doesn't take place in reality, <laughs> no, Colin. <right>. So, <laughs> Yeah. And but, uh, considering the end where she just comforts him instead of getting him to like a hospital. Ah, I know. I think you're on to something here, Sean. I don't think she's real. And mm. the, the, the interstitial artworks. Uh, and yeah, yeah, that are the, like, like chalked, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, ha- depicts her with angel wings. And I want to mm-hmm. now. I want to listen to every part of her narration again. Sean's like, I. Sean, God damn it! Am I going to watch this movie again? Sean's going to be up all night in his room with red yarn and like post its on the walls, <laughs> trying to like connect all the so all is, the dots. So is he actually the paparazzi? I don't know if there's anybody necessarily being paparazzi you don't think so i just want to be clear to the the audience that this this uh, this what we're talking about here is like beyond the movie kind yes of thing. Yeah. yeah based we're, on we're trying the, to make sense of yeah the movie. okay yeah because yeah. because it's never like like their relationship isn't really well established she just kind of shows up as i think she really only exists for him to have another person to talk to yeah, in certain yeah. scenes yeah. that's what it seems like yeah she gives him the uh paparazzi app which is like a map to the stars app that mm-hmm. the paparazzi use which becomes like a plot point because that way he's able to find where his hero mm-hmm. lives. Yeah. He has a couple of disastrous meetings mm-hmm. uh, with... Uh, Goes to the bookstore to get his jacket signed. Yeah, and he gets, uh, you know, I mean, but this is the thing again. I, I was like, you know, Durst and Travolta have been on the other side of this, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that's what they're bringing to it, right? You have to imagine that on the set, Travolta's like, yeah, 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 I, I meet people like this all the time, and now I'm trying to play. It's really weird. It's like therapy for them, yeah. right? They're trying to assume the the uh, Get in their perspective yeah. Yeah, yeah. of the people who come up to them yeah. uh, every day. And then I'm like, okay, so then how are you portraying them? It's odd that they choice that he would be uh, this kind of simple-minded, lumbering uh, I don't like think it is. I don't, I don't think, think it's so. an odd choice at all. I've been to a lot of conventions. I've seen sense. a lot of weird people at conventions. Yeah, it makes sense. So, is, and like I said, I can only imagine the kind of obsessive fans that would be that crazy about I guess yeah. Fred Durst. What I'm asking is like, is is Durst like saying, okay, fine. So basically, this is a nightmare movie for celebrities. I think so. It's a horror Absolutely. movie for celebrities, yeah. right? Yeah. And they have to, and they've got to draw the characters to an extreme. Otherwise, you know, if you just if, if Travolta plays like a normal dude, like there's no movie. Like right. it's got to be the extreme version of absolutely, it, which is why we get this. Yeah, yeah. I suppose, right? Because I mean, it's, it's got to be because you can't just make the movie where it's just like, hey, I'm yeah, that's it. Nice to meet you. It honestly, this movie reminds me a lot of Chapter Twenty Seven, the movie about Mark yeah, David Chapman killing does. John Lennon. It does. That movie was low budget as fuck too, but mm-hmm. somehow got Lindsay Lohan and Jared Leto, and there were some real questionable choices made in that movie. Yes, that was the one where Jared Leto gained like two hundred pounds, Leto, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and like, and his portrayal of Mark David Chapman was like kind of cringy at points too. Bit, yeah. yeah, so like that movie was, and that was like came out like two thousand six or two thousand seven, maybe. Mm. You know, I yeah. must have yeah. like another analog. I never saw saw this movie i saw trailers in 2004 there was a movie called paparazzi produced by mel gibson 
at the height of his uh, Yikes. Kind of shunned from, Whoa. and it starred. Um, <laughs> there's, some, there's definitely going to be a slant to that movie. Well, it, Tom Sizemore is like a paparazzo in it, and it's basically so that movie. I was like, this is a celebrity's uh, death wish, right? Hmm. The paparazzi come mm-hmm. at me and cause havoc in my life, and so I get to go kill them. <laughs> I think I remember this, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it. So I'm like. So these movies, those two movies, maybe mm-hmm. in my mind. A double like, feature. That's a drive-in yeah. double feature. You're saying. <laughs> yeah, because and if, you can chase it with chapter 27, right, too. If you're a celebrity, these are the horror movies for you. It's just, it's weird. Like, I'm trying to, like, engineer Fred Durst's idea. Like, you know, I had a I wouldn't a get too deep in movie. there. He might break your brain. You know I wouldn't really want to get that close to Fred Durst's brain, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fans. I think I think you were onto something, though, Colin, when we were watching this movie. I think the toothbrush scene, I think that's a very specific fear mm, um, right? of because like yeah. a violating like an intimate thing like that i think mm-hmm. that's a very specific that has to be based on somewhat of a real thing from someone's experience oh, right of course. This, yeah. this kind of, there's that's, yeah. more than plenty of examples of people finding out it's like somebody was in my home mm-hmm. and then your mind just goes nuts and you're just like well what are they doing when they were yeah. in here right like, well they could have yeah. done anything and what's mm-hmm. one of the most like just yeah, somebody just, using your fucking toothbrush yeah, that's mm-hmm. a very disturbing intimate you know especially yeah. the way Travolta like, does it with his long ass tongue yeah. <laughs> yeah. his tongue is all over that yeah. toothbrush well this <laughs> is the the dynamic in the movie sets up that um when the two first meet at this signing and of course you know a scheduling thing goes wrong or whatever so um, Travolta really wants to get something signed and uh, Sawa can't do it. And then, so then you have this meeting, which kind of defines where the movie is going to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in that mo- in that scene, Sawa is kind of an asshole. Yes, he yeah. is. Well, more than kind of. I found over this the, over the, too much. Kinda, overdone. yeah, because he's there like to do was. a job. Like I, like yeah. I've been to a lot of conventions, and I know how how like fr- like wanting to put your fist through the wall frustrating it can be when you've been waiting for hours and you get up to the line and they s- cut it off or they yeah. say come back later. Like I've been in that position. Yeah. I understand. Like you're like I've spent my all this money to be here, and like mm-hmm. and then on top Lucy's of that, I know. Right? But then on top of that, to have them be an asshole to you when you're already mad about like having to invest all this time, and money, and waiting, and then they're a dick to you on top of it. It's yeah. like. Man. Yeah, because I wondered if it like uh, that's why I was like, man. I mean, they, again, uh, Durst being the celebrity and Travolta being the celebrity and Sawa kind of paint this guy as a self obsessed narcissist who, you know, yeah. In that moment, it, granted, they catch him. He catches him at a uh, he's having a family issue, right? Right. Mm-hmm. With yeah. his ex-wife. I was going to say to to be fair, he does not start off being an asshole at first he's just like all right guy hang on a second you know yeah he is he is a nice guy at first Mm -hmm. but he keeps pushing him yeah it just seemed like i don't know maybe not maybe maybe you're right maybe i thought it went like from zero to 50 i thought it tripped pretty pretty hard pretty quick it went quick no i i I, I agree i think especially for him being at a signing event he kind of escalated quickly if it would have if he would have just been like out with his family and someone did that i understand getting that mad but he knew that that there was people around that wanted to meet him like Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew there was a big long line still waiting inside. Mm-hmm. Like, so then is the message? Well, if you'd just been a little more patient with old Moose, then this whole thing wouldn't have actually happened. Nah, because Moose shows up at his house like three or four times, and he's still pretty patient with him after that. I would say, like, I would have been calling the cops that first instant that dude's in my property. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's well, no cops ever the, called in this movie. He sees him at the gate because Moose shows up at the gate with mm-hmm. a letter that's written a, an apology letter. Um, but I think that's the last time that he really interacts with them. He's like, get out of here. And don't come back. He does see him. But the gardener says, I one. saw someone in the yard. Yeah, but for some reason, this is where he I doesn't believe problem. it. He doesn't connect that like, oh, there was somebody going through the yard. It's probably the gardener. Like, no, you just had an experience with a guy right. at yeah. your uh, front Makes gate. No you would immediately jump to it's that guy. Right. right. But uh, that's Hunter what, mm-hmm. doesn't do that. That's what I was expecting. And then mm-hmm. he doesn't do it. And we're just like, ah, shouldn't he? If, yeah. Like you said, at some point during the movie, it's like something fell out of order. Yeah. Like there like was this, 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 this reshuffled scene. Around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somewhere. Because he should have reacted differently mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, uh, I mean, this escalates. Basically, Moose keeps on getting into, well, I mean, I guess the, 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 the most reaction that I heard from you guys watching this movie was when uh moose gets into the house mm-hmm. and well this is after he's killed the housekeeper like on accident yes. she yes. is hitting him with something to get off the property he overreacts and you know kills her and he then, pushes her and he, she hits her dome on a bird bath 
yeah. yeah, fountain thing. And she's dead. And he's like, well, you know, you got a new nosebleed. And then he just kind of ignores it. And you're like, are we going to deal with the <laughs> And then the whole movie ignores it until yeah. the very yeah. end of the movie. That's yeah. why I was like, it has to be like the Saturday or something. The next day is the Saturday, right? When they mm-hmm. weren't coming in, you know, mm-hmm. the gardener or the uh, the maid. And nobody's going out in the yard. Yeah, nope. they don't go It's a pretty out small yard. yard. Nobody, nobody looks outside. There's a lot yeah. of bushes. Yeah. You it's know, a pretty small yard, and that house looks down into the yard. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. And she's right, like, she's at the fountain. bright white clothing, mm. kind of just out in the middle of the yard. Oh, and apparently Hunter and his maid have been having, like, an affair for a while. Yes. I guess that's supposed to, like, explain why him and his wife split up, I guess. Like, I don't know. It's very uh, awkward. The it, doesn't it doesn't serve any anywhere. point. No, it right. But it gives one of the funniest bits that I liked, where he's talking to his agent on the phone. He's like... I kissed the maid again. Yeah, did that. Yeah, but I'm like, just, like that. It's just a little funny. Like it was a joke, or it was so bizarre and out of. I think that was meant that to be was, a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. His delivery of it, I think it was meant to be a joke. Was it? I th- no. I thought it felt that felt like one of the most real things in this movie. Like he would. This sounds like how you would tell someone that. Who already right. knew it was happening? I'm, I'm not saying like, I'm not I saying he again. was saying it in a joking manner to the other character. I'm saying as the audience, I think we were supposed to laugh at I that. I think so. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Hmm. But and I think it's delivered that way because it made yeah. me laugh. And it, mm-hmm. but it seems like a genuine thing. He's like, yeah, I did that again. Mm-hmm. I know I'm shitty. I'm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it came across as like a genuine thing someone might say <laughs> if they were making out with their maid. Oh man, the line like, yeah. I I I mean, there's a lot of lines I can't get over, but the one I really can't get over is. It's after I think it's after the first time he gets onto into Hunter Dunbar's yard and he goes back to talk to Leah, his paparazzo friend, and he's like, "I went to Hunter's house," and she was like, "Well, how was it?" And he just like with the most sincerity in the world, John Travolta goes, "He could take better care of his plants." <laughs> <laughs> could yeah. not handle it. Yeah. That like, like he was concerned. Like he should take better care of his plants. He was yeah. like concerned. Yeah, about his plants. that was his yeah. biggest takeaway from yeah. that. From seeing like this guy he's obsessed with house, his biggest takeaway was he's really not treating his plants yeah, well. Because his point, whole point of view is like he doesn't hate the guy. He's like he he no, he wants to like be a part of his life. Yeah, and he's like this has gone horribly wrong. I didn't make the right impression that I hope to make, and so I'm gonna try and make that up. And in doing so, he makes it worse. But he doesn't seem to realize how badly. He's made it worse, Mm -hmm. and so he keeps on going, and then he's in the yard, and then he kills the woman. Doesn't have any kind of regret, fear, or anything about that. He doesn't realize he killed her. No, maybe that's it. Because he keeps saying, "Oh, you have a nosebleed. You just gotta like do this." Like, yeah. He he doesn't realize he doesn't get it out of memory because now he's in uh, Dunbar's house. Yeah. Oh, this part, the sequence is amazing. Dunbar comes home and doesn't know that Moose is in the house. Even though he's hiding under his kid's bed. Yeah, and in the closet and yeah. brushing his yeah. teeth with the Walking toothbrush. through in the background. Mm-hmm. And then uh, eventually... Uh, effective? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was for me. Because it, yeah. it was tense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it was. was. It was. It was. And tense where you're just going... I mean, I was audible watching this. I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, you're just waiting for that meeting. Yeah. Yep. Hunt, Hunter Dunbar takes... Uh, it's established he takes, like, sleeping pills. He falls asleep in his dad recliner. Drinking his IPAs. We know this. Because it says IPA, it's like a white yeah. label with yeah. big like black it's letters. Like, it's like when uh, on Lost when they had the beer that just said beer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dharma beer, yeah. yeah, Dharma beer, just says IPA. And and Moose is is like could not be more excited that he's like in Hunter Dunbar's house. He's sleeping in the chair, so he takes a selfie with him and drops the phone onto <laughs> Devin Sawa, and that Sean d- flew out of his seat. He's like, ah, he could no, not. don't drop it, pick it, <laughs> get it up. And then he's, he keeps touching him. He keeps touching his face. Yeah. He kisses him on the head. He does, but he's and like... He takes he's, a picture of him. He's yeah. like, he pokes him in the mouth, and then he does the he, ear thing to he him. He opens his eyelid. Opens his eye. Yep. You're just like, ah. He just won't, he just keeps going back and for more. And a little kiss on the forehead as yeah. he's taking a picture. Those are good sleeping pills. Yeah, yeah that and guy the, is out. Oh, and then stuff. he and then he goes and he sits in the other recliner and falls asleep. And they have a little slumber party little and <laughs> yeah, yeah. just waiting. We're like, who's gonna wake up first? Yeah. And then he wakes up the next day and leaves. That was surprising to me. That I'm like, okay, so we're done with this then. But that gives you the opportunity for him to come back the next night. Mm-hmm. I guess you know. Or well, no, this he, is where we get the um, the next interaction between the two. Where uh, Devin Sawa and his kid was that he was driving he down the road. The, was that when he gave him the uh, autograph? Uh, no, no uh, their was, first interaction before. at the gate was when he autographed his chest yeah. with, in, harshly in like, in like a scene that was cut in the trailer to make it look like he was going to stab him. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
you want your autograph? And he like holds it he like a knife and brings it, it yeah. down yeah. really hard. Yeah. Yeah. But no, this time he's uh he's they're driving away from the house and they see um, Moose walking away well, hold again. Hold on, hold on. What happens before they see Moose when they're driving in this car? Oh, they play some. We oh. need to talk about Limp this. Biscuit <laughs> and say how awesome it is. Devin and- Sawa specifically asks his kid if he wants to listen to the good shit, and goes on and on about how this used to be the stuff back in the day. Like, there's it is a lengthy scene yeah. of talking These and listening about Limp These are the moments that biscuit. really do take you out of the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, That's- it's like. <laughs> Man, they accuse would it, would indulgent. It have, we'll say. Would it have been more effective if he, if he had played Stan? Yeah, that, hell yeah, would have. That would have been funny. Oh, but but he that never would. Have though. You have to pay for it. He, he hates Eminem way too much. To uh, I know. True, I know. True. I know. That's why I'm kind of even surprised he cast Evan Sauer. I was like, this movie's kind of Stanish anyway. Yeah. So the fact that he casted him is just a little. Like, I think that was him going to going to Eminem. Like, like, I'm going to steal your guy. I'm going to put him in my oh, movie. Yeah? Maybe. Maybe. Is, this? is this like you know? I mean, since uh, in uh, well, I was going to say in rap, but I suppose in new metal or rap. Well, or please whatever. talk about I mean, rap, Colin. Please <laughs> talk about rap. Well, the Go idea that, they, that uh, there's all these call outs, you know, across uh, artists talking mm-hmm. to each right. other in their music. So then when he makes a movie, he would assume that, it, that the same. So thing he's, works. Throw, he's thrown down to Eminem right now? Yeah, well, he's, you know, he's playing his own. A good, music. like, 15 years later. <laughs> yeah. He's shouting things out. Like, yeah. last laugh, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got him. Except no. Okay. Yeah. No, well, and not Fre- I think we're forgetting that Fred Durst fought with literally everyone yes, back at like the peak of his fame. It True. wasn't just yes, Eminem. It was Eminem was like one of the only people that just fought back. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I thought for sure his like hatred of Eminem would have run so deep that he wouldn't even put Devin Sawa in this movie. I, like, I'm really surprised that. But I agree is. with you. It's probably like a slight like, yeah, I took your guy. Like, I agree Might with you. Be. Who knows? I don't think it's effective, but I agree with you. <laughs> no. Neither is playing you don't think he nailed for five it? minutes no, while your characters so. are driving in the car. Oof. Like, yeah, that's but good, yeah. isn't it? You like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that good yeah. shit? Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, it's bad. It's cringy. Oh, and it's, it's a bad. new song, cringy. too. It's not even like a classic Limp Bizkit No. Song. That's like a Which that's is like, new what's stuff. the point? Yeah. New it's stuff? like made for yeah, that's the movie? Like, yeah. It's like new-ish. I don't well, know I didn't how recent it is. I did not either. Yeah, I mean, well. I I, 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 <laughs> until they explicitly said, hey, do you want to listen to some Limp Bizkit? Wouldn't have known. Oh, So that's the kind of movie this is. Well, this all kind of, uh, then things escalate, right? Because uh, Moose, well, we jump over a scene because he feels alienated by everybody. He's having problems with this other street performer. Todd the God. Who, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, him and Bill Paxton's kid Mm -hmm. are always uh, picking on him and beating him up in the bathrooms and all that other stuff. In the most cliche bully bullshit that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess he couldn't write anything better, so there you go. Oh, the wise black security guard, he's there. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Walks in for one scene and walks out. <laughs> yeah, this is your diversity casting, but you got to do it in like the wise uh, yep. uh, mm-hmm. character. And then uh, you end up with uh, jump. Oh, after sorry, his um, uh, paparazzo friend uh, is like, you're doing stuff that's like criminal here. Right. You're posting this to social media, so that relationship implodes. And where does that leave Moose? He has to go and. Actually, take Devin Sawa hostage, tie him up in his own bedroom. Mm-hmm. We don't actually see, like it, the, the movie a made jump. a leap. There's mm-hmm. a leap, yeah, which I was kind of surprised by because, like everything else, it, like it kept on going. It felt like we were retracing our steps in order to show us what was happening. This was just like, well, you know what's going on. Mm-hmm. We're just going to jump to. They're that like, part. you've seen misery before. Do we yeah, really right? need to well, like you know that the guy takes uh, sleeping pills? We've established that already. Mm-hmm. So, um, and you know, they they establish how much he can sleep through. Yeah, right. so, yes. yeah and we know that the the you know all the security, uh, everybody's dead or off for the weekend. Right. So he can get in there. We just don't see the moment where uh, we don't see Moose's like decision point. <clears throat> we don't see him decide to do something. We just go from well, him pushing see, away Leah. We see him directly like, to burning his his shit in the in the yard, and we see him like snap. True. Mm-hmm. We True. do get that. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then we get does the- he burn all the shit, and then Leah comes over. No. Well, and remember, and Devin, Devin Sawa calls him a stalker, and that's like the word that really right. triggers him that and triggers sets him, him off. That's yeah. what makes the turn happen. Because yeah. everybody's been calling him a stalker. Mm-hmm. 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 Even my friends are calling me stalkers. Um, but this is the scene which I think uh, every, it seems like, <clears throat> I don't know if it's um, 
both celebrities and fans uh, probably fantasize. Maybe maybe we can say that, right? That people fantasize about being with a a person that uh, uh, that you are um, you know a fan of, mm-hmm. and having a one on one conversation, down to brass tacks mm-hmm. conversation with them, the captive audience right. scene. And so Durst and Travolta oh, yeah. this get to is, do this. This is where they're. I guarantee when they read this, it's like this is where we. I'm going to figure out the psychology of all this yeah. from this scene right mm-hmm. here. Yeah. So we got one guy tied down, and the other guy like uh, trying to basically say like you know these are the reasons why like oh well it's we the, should uh, talk about the way he enters the room. We should yes. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Quite an entrance. Moose comes in in a Michael Myers jumpsuit. With a butcher knife and a Jason mask on to, like, freak him out even though he's tied down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, like, takes the mask off and is, like, still, which was very distracting for me to be him to be in the Michael Myers suit and, like, kind of be shot in silhouette a little bit. I was like, is this like a, are they trying to be like, hey, if you, uh. You want John Travolta to be involved with this Halloween franchise? Here's his little his little reel here. If you want to take a look at this, but it's like I mean, the whole movie is peppered with all these. Call outs to other movies. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. when they're yeah. looking at the homes that are, you know, mm-hmm. that are on the ma- the uh, Walk of Fame, the Stars map. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like so Tyler Jack Durden. Torrance in there. Mm-hmm. Tyler Durden was yep. the first one. Jack Torrance. And yeah. Jack Torrance. Mm-hmm. There's call outs to Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. The Reservoir Maniac remake Dogs. sucks, apparently. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just they're odd. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, okay, this is very specific and personal to the person who wrote it because yeah. these aren't like the kind of workshopped. Uh, movie call-outs that you get in other movies where it's mm. like, oh, okay, we all know what this is. This mm-hmm. is very specific to like a very specific type of like Comic-Con going uh, audience, right? Isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like these are the people who are going to see this movie. These are the people who understand these references. But at the same time, you're like, you're you're casting them as Moose. Mm. Yeah. Right? Is this weird? No, I... <laughs> It like, all I mean, makes just, sense to me. Just from a commercial sense, you know, I guess maybe that's what I'm trying to attack it from. It's like a, from a commercial sensibility is like if you're going to make this movie and expect people to uh, come and see it. I don't know that they did expect people to come and see it. I think like, like got to remember, Colin, this is a passion project. It was going to get made whether people's art or not, because Fred Durst wanted to make it. Yeah. This you know, art, yeah. Passion, that's did how, you not tell by yeah. the black and white flashback? And don't the, forget uh, that. the charcoal uh, drawings. Yes. Oh, Who did you say yes. did those? Uh, what did I read said out? Wes Borland, the bass player that used to oh, wear really? the blackout contacts and Biscuit did them, is what yeah. I had read. Don't know if that's true or not. That's what I read. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I'll go to the mat to say that uh, this is uh, Fred Durst's art because of the black and white flashback to his <laughs> mother and her boyfriend. I, I and guess him being raised by television. Yeah, which horror movies why. comforted him as a kid. That's where yeah. we're supposed to take from it, I guess. Like in the cable guy. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is I, like this is like a, this is a <laughs> yeah, spiritual no. sequel to the cable guy. You know what this movie is? Basically. This movie when I was watching it, I'm like, you know, because I mean I kind of gave Joker like I mean it's like, man, you know, this is like this is Joker without the bat, you know, he becomes the arch villain payoff. Right? This mm-hmm. is a guy having his worst day, uh, you know. Over and over and over again, trying to meet his, uh, uh, you know, like idol, mm-hmm. right? Isn't it? I mean, is it just me? <laughs> that's true. No, now that you say now that, now that you say that, that's true. Now that you say that, though, I want like a deep fake, like swap of like John Travolta and Joker right. and Joaquin in the fanatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Robert <laughs> De Niro for Devin Sawa. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's let's make it happen, internet. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just a trailer, cut that trailer for me. <laughs> Uh, and then I had a, a, a. You guys laugh, but if Joaquin was in the fanatic, we'd all be talking about how it's nominated for an Oscar right oh, now. Oh yeah, but that's uh, but <laughs> that's the thing. It's like I think you know. Then you start looking at like, well, there are scenes that land in Joker that the equivalent doesn't land in the fanatic. Mm. And then you're like, well, did does that mean that Durst wasn't able to pull it off? You know. Um, but anyway, they have their little their moment of uh, you know uh, whatever where they they're laying it all out right. right. Well, they lay it all out. They bond. They negotiate. They kind of go through everything. Yeah, but we're the, aware the, that the like, world turns pink. Yeah, yeah. That was, why did that happen? We got a little rose colored glasses. We had an that. After Effects preset that was going to expire, rose so we want to use glasses. It. I think that's it. Yeah. It, was it a, feels like it. Yeah, and they're imagining because Sawa's uh, negotiation tactic to get out is to like use his actor training. Yeah. Right, and he's like, "Why don't you use some of this actorly technique with me? Mm-hmm. We're gonna imagine a future and make it happen." 
which ultimately is going to result in him being loosed from the bonds, released right, from yes. the bonds. But he gets Travolta to see this future where, you know, we don't actually, it's all done in the performances. We don't actually see these. Oh, no, scenes. it's all right there. Um, mm-hmm. Where he's like, you know, yeah, I'm going to sign all these autographs for you, man. I'll watch and some we, movies, eat some ice cream. Yeah. We're going to have a night, Yes, because Moose has a thing about ice cream. That is like, he lives for ice cream. To this the point- isn't a treat. <laughs> <laughs> another, another great line delivery in Wait, what, what's happening? Not a treat. <laughs> what's happening there? What was that? What was like Marmalade? I think it was, it, was e- it was either like Marmite or like Vegemite. Vegemite? It looks like yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Probably Vegemite. Because yeah. yeah. he says it's not sweet. It's yeah, some kind that's of- why I was like, it's either Marmite or Vegemite. Yeah, it's something yeah. like that. But he got out of the fridge. Yeah, it's like a, it looks because it looks like a jar of jam, but he's like really disappointed that it's not sweet. Yeah, and you feed this to your kid? That's not a treat. <laughs> I, moose, he moose. ice cream and horror movies, man. <laughs> that's the truest thing that's like been said in a movie in a long time. He said, <laughs> get some ice cream and horror flavor. Yeah, he said that. He said all your kid needs is ice cream and horror movies, and I was like, bingo. He knows what's up. <laughs> You're uh, not wrong. But it, and when he first comes into into Devin Sawa's house and he's going through everything, he opens the freezer and he says, "All that money and no ice cream." Because there's it's no such ice a disappointment. Freezer, yeah, blank stare. <laughs> mm. Yeah. A, a line fully like he delivered it, he yeah. nailed it. Yep. Move on to the other side of the fridge. Mm-hmm. The other line he nailed was that first one. We're like, uh, this better be quick because I got to poop or something. What do you say? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I have to poo. Make yeah. it quick. I have to poop or something like that. First yeah. line of the movie. Yeah. Um, but what happens here is the dynamic shifts, and finally we get something out of. Uh, first of all, Devin Howard does get stabbed on accident yeah. with a fake knife, but yeah. he does get stabbed apparently. He bleeds yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. He's he like, through his him shirt. We see a little, he nicks yeah. him, yeah. Yeah, he mm-hmm. gets him a couple times. Mm-hmm. And then he's upset. Like, oh my God, did I actually stab you? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, that's not good. Because it's not Willis helping his psychology. He can't let him go because right. then he gets in trouble. Mm-hmm. Right. But Sawa's like, got to try and convince the guy who's holding him to let him go so he can actually get out. And once he does, Sawa, cha- or sorry, not Sawa, but Hunter uh, Dunbar. Dunbar channels his inner action movie. Persona, yeah, because he does. I'm assuming Either, like Western action movie persona <laughs> going by that gun he's got. Yeah, yeah, he grabs it's the like, fucking it's like shotgun. Winchester. It's like a Winchester it's like a, rifle. Yeah, it's, it's, fucking... it's like a no, it's like a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what's he doing here? I mean, what did you think is his, it, his psychology? It's still, I still can't figure it out because we, as we were watching it, we're like, wait, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? He shot. He shoots his hand and shoots his fingers off. Moves, moves his hand. Yeah, yeah, blows his fingers right. But off. then throws the gun away. After that, well, he throws, throws it on the bed. Shot. He throws yeah. it on the bed. Yeah, so that he can grab the knife he's got and stab him in the eye. Yeah, it's fucking bone. Well, no, no, yeah. to cut himself out he of the cut, bed. Yeah. He cuts himself. Yeah. Off, uh, out of the ropes. Out yeah. of the ropes. He also tries to make him deaf by shooting two shots on either side of his head yeah. into the carpet. I like, he's just in that. revenge mode right now. Yeah, then he's kill like, him. He's got to be. He's, he's got to like, be. He just wants to fuck with him. Because he's literally he's... like three feet from him. Right. And Do he think... doesn't shoot him in the chest. Yeah, because like, he wants to. Because the guy fucked with him. So I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to murder him. He yeah. just wants to fuck he with him. He just wants to scare him yeah. off for good. Right. But then he goes a little too far when he does eventually stab him in the eye. Yeah. Which with a giant knife. Yeah. yeah. Like a, uh, this like, is a knife. Like a crocodile yeah. Dundee. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But you say he goes too far. Why do you say that? <sighs> I don't say that. The movie says that. Okay. Yeah. How so? Well, he stabs him in the eye. Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned that like, before. Like, really deep. It looked really well, deep, at least. It, like, pops his eye. Yeah. yeah. It's and like, it's and you got Travolta, like, crying. <laughs> yeah, you know? I don't, yeah. I don't know what... <sighs> I think I'm so. confused at the scene or my feelings towards it. I don't know if they, it should have gone farther or it didn't go far enough. I'm not. It's weird. It, and point, I think I just said the same thing, but other than that. He's gone too far. I saw it. Maybe you disagree with me. It's like this guy has played action movie heroes. He's all doing his, his greatest hits. <laughs> and so he's like, this is how you respond mm-hmm. to this situation in an action movie. And That's I'm what it that seemed guy. like. Yeah. It seemed like things, yeah, things you would fake for like an action movie. It, yeah, it, that's I, cause that's the only way it makes sense. Yeah, so and then, like, then, then when he stabbed the guy in the eye, it, was, it was like, oh shit. Because yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> then he's like, uh, okay. And then he's yeah. got to like I, <laughs> psych I, himself back I up know. because he's disgusted. By I want to I want to believe you, but I feel like you're giving it too much credit. I mean, true, there is no evidence for that in the movie. That's Like, that makes sense and that motivation is like, oh, well, okay. I can get on board, but I don't the know movie doesn't that say it was that. that like 
explicit. Yeah, well, I'm using I'm using the performance and the, some of the choices as the evidence, but I can't say I don't know if that was directed that I was way. Say, it doesn't feel like it was directed that way. I don't or, know. Or if that know. was just the actor saying he was going to do it. You know what I mean? It's hard to tell. Yeah, because he's. <laughs> It's hard to tell because he's a fucking actor in the movie. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's, right. it's like I had another hat wearing a hat. You know, so many they, hats. They make comment about that, They're like, well, I'm an actor, and I, you know, I'm using mm-hmm. my, you know, his ex uh, girlfriend, ex wife, tells him basically, like, you know, I can't believe anything that you say. You're an actor. Yeah. I I guess like, so after he like stabs him in the eye and like he kind of realizes what's happened and he like bandages up his hand and kind of sends him out the door. What like what's his next? Step. Why would he like, send him? Why is he sending yeah. him out the door? Yeah, well, the he part. didn't take him to the hospital because well, I thought that was what was going to happen. This is the, the the continuation from him, like feeling like he's gone too far, and then wrapping him up and just pushing him out the door. Yeah, I'm confused from that point on. Yeah, as to yeah. what he's, yes. what he wants at this point. Like, well, does he, he think he's just going to shove him out and he's going to go away? Who? Yeah, th- what does he think is going to happen? So, did. I think he thinks yeah. he taught him a lesson, and that guy's not. And that's and that's it. This is so this is a very Julio? simple psychology, but like, no, I think you're probably right. <laughs> I think this was in the movie because he's basically yeah. like he shows him the door. He doesn't like shove him out or anything. He basically like takes him up to the door, opens it, and kind of does that like gently. Right him out, here, yeah. you go. Get mm-hmm. the fuck out! It's don't a, come. It's back. a more severe version of the thing before. Don't come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah. then. Yeah, and then. Julio? And then they try to pull this, I, can you call it a twist, over on us by the cops show up at Devin Sawa's house. Yeah. And the gardener, like, basically tells the cops, like, hey, he killed the maid. Because the Which, gardener's presumably found the maid's body. Uh, yeah. Apparently. Doesn't know anything about the crazy guy who just held him hostage. No. But, but why would he automatically assume that he did Because it. he was cheating on his wife with the maid. But and does he, the gardener know that? Probably. They I never, mean, I, they don't. Nobody say says that. it explicitly. No, no, they don't say that. So we're, we're missing an evidence chain here. To, yeah, I'm missing. Right. I'm missing some an motive. Evidence, an evidence chain and I'm a missing and a, motive. And a hearty. Uh, I didn't do this from Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa was just like, <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> who's just quietly going with it, and he's just yeah. like, whatever. Even, is even though he didn't, didn't even know his maid was dead, he didn't yeah. know yeah. his maid was dead. But yeah, he's just gonna like, yeah, I guess I murdered my maid. I didn't know also, was dead. Right, also, Gardner if, nods. Yep. It's yeah, that's my other thing. If someone calls the cops and be like, "Hey, I think my boss murdered my coworker," he doesn't show up with the cops to like to to pin it on to, him right. to literally yeah. point at him. Yeah. Like, that's the man, yeah. officer. <laughs> that doesn't happen. No. <laughs> and plus, Devin's how should just be like, "Hey, I got a couple fingers upstairs that say I didn't do this." Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the an easy blood out. on my shirt right now. Well, the, blood, the blood on his shirt looks out. incriminating at this point. Right. Because right. It's like, well, he killed the maid. Right. I know, but, got blood but on shouldn't his, his reaction be like, "Oh, good, you're here." Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there was a crazy man in my house yeah. that tied me up in my bed. Say that. The restraints are still there. Like, uh, what the fuck? Well, then let me ask you this: Is the intent of the movie to say somehow? Is there like some kind? Is it going for like a moral ending here? It's like somehow. Uh, Hunter Dunbar is going to pay now with the law you know, mean, for, yeah, for for being a bad celebrity. But it doesn't necessarily end well for Moose. Like, <sighs> to, in order to complete that kind of thought, wouldn't Moose have to, like, be redeemed, Moose too? Moose now wouldn't, a pirate. Well, yeah. wouldn't things have to be going better for Moose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Things should be better for Moose right. than how he ends yeah. up yeah. in order for that to make Bleeding sense. Bleeding out on Hollywood Boulevard. Right. Right. Yeah. Missing fingers. Is it punishment for Moose? He's, and, and the worst insult is that even though he's been playing this cop on Hollywood Boulevard badly <laughs> and people just give him pity money, now... People are coming up to him as he's bleeding all over the place. Like, that's the most awesome costume I've ever seen. And it's like, are we saying something about like the whole fucking city? That's like nobody dumb. can tell what's yeah. real and what isn't. And They're also whatever. foreign uh, uh, tourists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, which I, yeah. I would assume that he made them foreign tourists because nobody else would be that dumb. Because if you lived in Hollywood and like... Uh, maybe you're, a regular you're inoculated to Hollywood Boulevard. Guess, yeah, yeah. Know, Hollywood something. Boulevard is a tourist attraction. Yeah. You know, like locals aren't don't go like hang out down there. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, to be fair though, Colin, who the fuck wants a picture with an unlicensed Bobby cop like on Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard? You know, like True. I understand this movie probably couldn't get all the licensing, but in the yeah. middle of the day, why would you want a picture with a dude who's just bleeding out? 
in a quote unquote costume. Like, yeah. God, what? Yeah. What? That's what, they awesome, put that some Walking uh, Dead bullshit or something. This yeah, is, you got like a really that looks really real. Mm-hmm. Your eyes like you know cut in half and your blood all over your yeah, face. And you're missing you fingers. Be? Yeah, and then uh, his guardian uh, angel, the paparazzo comes. What's her name? Leah, Leah. Leah. comes. His imaginary and, uh, Leah comes and comforts him. And Does, then that's, that's it. The thing that makes me think she's not real. Just comforts him. Yeah. She doesn't like. We got to get you to a hospital. Nope. I Even assume. though she was in a car. She, she was posted, in a car. She was driving, driving the car, saw him, got out of the car, went to comfort him. So she could have been like, We gotta get you to the hospital, nope. buddy, and put we him in the go car. No. Back, walking down nope. the street. Everything will be fine. She's not real. <laughs> I think you're on to something here, Sean. I'll I'll go to my grave. I'm not seeing that. an argument against it, you know? I don't think there is. Literally interacts with nobody else. She narrates the fucking movie mm-hmm. from the uh, aforementioned omniscient point of view, yeah. Yeah. which we were like, yeah, because you were like, is she like giving her statement to the cops? That's or what something? I thought. But no, it's just she narrates the movie, mm-hmm. and you're like, and she knows about movie. the maid dying. Yeah, when no one else other than the gardener knows doors. about that. Yeah, yeah, she's making comments about everybody and mm-hmm. Devin Sawa being an actor. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, we're all just digesting yeah. it. Yeah. Still, we're gonna digest it yeah. a little more. I tell you what, we're <laughs> gonna do. We're gonna tell you whether or not we want you to watch this movie. We're gonna go around the room. Each one of us, I'm sure, has an opinion about this. But before we get there, we're gonna have to ask you to bear with us as we answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're gonna need the help of our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Should we rename Igor Moose? Can Moose be I mean, he does have the mullet the going guy? on. Yeah, similar. he's got that wig. Yeah. He does. Oh, yeah. that, 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 like, it's like a bowl cut in the front, but like a mullet in the back. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's a look. Hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. But you can't, he, but he doesn't have a mirror to see in the back, so he just lets just it, lets it go. go. He does eat a lot of ice cream. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for bringing us the mail, Igor, and thank you for writing in. And you can uh, write in by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can write in by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show for the time of your life. Pink Floyd, 1979, writes in and says, I found this podcast a couple of years ago while searching for a podcast that covered Phantom of the Paradise, and I've been a regular listener ever since. As a fan of horror and cult items, I highly enjoy the movies that this group chooses to cover, and I enjoy hearing everyone's take on these films, even if I don't always agree. As a listener, you feel like you're hanging out with a friend, and each week I look forward to hanging out with them again. Oh, thanks. I love thanks. that. Is that a new iTunes? Uh, that was, yeah. 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 We yeah, look forward to hanging out with you, too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Come over. Welcome to the Freak Show family. Yeah. Yay. Wait, don't uh, come over. We just went over a whole thing. Yeah, no, no, never, never mind. Of all episodes for sorry. you to say that. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Thank you for for that glowing review. <laughs> uh, about tonight's movie, The Fanatic, Brandon Lutmer writes in and says, This movie uh. took in $3,200 at the box office. I did the math. Approximately 346 people saw the movie in the theater. It opened at 52 theaters, so around seven people per theater saw this movie. <laughs> You know what? I would have been that's one of those people right. if I had had the opportunity. That's about right. Yeah? Well, yeah. That's right. You oh, yeah. I mean, we went and saw Gotti and yeah. had a great time. You're goddamn so. right we did. <laughs> but that's amazing. Mm-hmm. I know. Yes, Gotti was amazing. People you are correct. <laughs> saw the movie at the theater. Michael Whitaker says, I haven't seen it, but John Travolta was on our local radio station to promote it a few months ago. At the time, I had no idea he was promoting an unmitigated disaster mm-hmm. of a movie. If you guys recommend it, I may check it out. Sometimes these movies aren't really awful, but just popular to pick on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Pile on movies. Yeah. 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 Uh, Stuart Dees writes in and says, it's pretty bad. Watching it, I couldn't help but hear Robert Downey Jr.'s character from Tropic Thunder advising <laughs> Ben Stiller never to go full retard. <laughs> That's, That's a great movie, man. I need to that rewatch Tropic Thunder. Movie. Do, I've been hearing a lot about it more recently. I need to rewatch it's it again. It's a great oh, movie. That movie's oh, amazing. I thought you hadn't seen it. Oh, no, no I've seen it. No, no, I just haven't seen it in a long that time. That movie's fantastic. That, that is a really good satire movie. Yes, it is. Like, it's yeah. solid. I it, love the that The levels movie. of the satire, too. Yeah. So great. Yeah. 
Uh, well, Ryan <laughs> Larson, he writes in and says, I finally watched it a little while back. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. Hey, that's how we saw it. Uh, it has some funny lines, and at least Travolta goes all in on the role. It'll be fun to hear everybody's take on it. Yeah. 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 Sure. We legitimately laughed out loud at some of the we lines did. in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a photo posted to social media that showed John Travolta strangling uh, Todd the God. Todd the God. Todd the God. Sean Roger writes in and says, pictured here is me doing what I would like to do to Fred Durst. <laughs> That's fair. I think a lot of I, people have that opinion. Yeah, I think that there are more of you that want to do that than don't want to do yes. that. Yes. Dom Cree says, Rick Moranis is looking pretty rough these days. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> that was a slam on Rick Moranis. <laughs> Jesus. Leave the poor man alone. His yeah. wife died. Yeah. Leave him alone. He left the business for a reason. <laughs> yeah. He's happy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, G-Money's talking about the movie in general. He said this is uh, borderline offensive for mm-hmm. both Travolta and Durst. Jolo Hoho says uh, this is Travolta at his finest. Apple Leva says an early line from Travolta, hurry up because I got a poop, was a red flag. Uh, <laughs> William Douglas says I'm thinking about going with his hairstyle. Bravo. Michael Patowski says I enjoyed The Fanatic more than it, Chapter 2. Now that's a piece of shit movie. That's a bold statement. <laughs> he says, I love your show. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. That's nice. Thank Peter you. Gatt says it's pretty forgettable. Mm. And the Chronicles of Not Riddick says we need a From Paris with Love, too. The movie's all right. That's I don't, John Travolta. Yeah. Oh, no, I remember. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan Reese Myers. Davies. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Davies for, same, for some reason. Yeah. Myers. That wasn't a bad movie. That's a Luke Besson yeah. produced one of those. Yeah, yeah, like he yeah. got yeah. American actors to go to France and he, do He embraces movies. the baldness. He shoots a bazooka. Yep. Yeah, it's a good movie. Really? Never saw it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't either, but. You know. It is exactly what you think it is, yeah. you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so last week we did Creep Show. No mm. mail on Creep Show yet. That'll come next week. Probably. We well, yeah. got mail on Sleepaway Camp. Appiel uh, says it's a hilarious scene when the pedophile cook gets boiled alive. Yeah. It's pretty great. Grant Marish says, Aunt Martha feels like someone uh, someone I should have seen at a drag queen, or someone I should have seen a drag queen replicate. Where are all the Aunt Martha impersonators? What a missed opportunity. <laughs> That'd be a deep cut. Yeah, drag. it's a yeah. Small, uh, small crowd yeah. for that, that unfortunately. Would be, I, would, I would appreciate that. Yeah. If I saw that, I'd free, I'd kind of I'd probably freak out. I'd be like, I know what that is. And nobody else does. What well, you wanted to dress up as Moose from this movie on the motorcycle in the English Cop? Uh, I'm giving this away. This is true. That's yeah. it. Is my Halloween yeah. costume. Yeah. Um, uh, you do that, and I'll do the the version of him with the Rico vest on back. We all just do different versions. Yeah. John Travolta, yeah, let's John Travolta do it. Yeah. In, in the fanatic. You kind of got the beard going, Tom. I know. I'm working on it. Just got to do that weird hairline. Yeah. Uh, I can help you with that. So um, we His posted. Will not help with that. <laughs> we were talking last week about the odd fashions of sleepaway camp. Mm. Uh, Maya Madsen writes in and says, "There's nothing hotter than a mesh half shirt and some cut off jeans, except for maybe mid calf tube socks with contrasting color bands." Yowza! <laughs> yeah. uh, this is where we uh, dig up some old photos of Colin and post them. On the, uh, I never had the, yeah, but I never had, I had the mesh shirt, but this never the, the midriff thing. Uh, Dave Forbes says, to be fair, if my midriff looked like that, I'd probably give it a go. Hashtag <laughs> dad <bod. laughs> Nice. Uh, Copley D says, yeah, what was up with that? My father claims that it was hot and you couldn't go into stores without shirts on, but that feels convenient. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Hayner says, why would you even wear a shirt at that point? Delicate nipples? No yes. shirt, no shoes, no service. Like, yeah. like he just said, got yeah. covered. Yeah. And uh, Dennis Peck's talking about the character Judy, right? You remember Judy from uh, yeah. the Sleepaway yeah, yeah. Camp? Uh, apparently, she finally got her revenge in Judy. That must be like a short film. Huh. Uh, Karen Fields came back and guess okay. what? Unless guess. she's talking about the Renee Zellweger movie. Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> like, wow, well, like, maybe I will go see this. I was like, that's a different Judy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, guess what her weapon of choice is? Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Uh, uh, curling iron. Yeah, yeah. Curling iron. There, there it is. Boom. There we'll have go. to see. We'll have to seek out Judy. There's a lot of mail. That yeah, was. It was a heavy mailbag. Very much. <laughs> Thank for you for watching. Judy and be like, great. this is bullshit. This got nothing to do with it. This is so <laughs> boring. <laughs> She's just singing. <laughs> well, all right. That brings us to the final round, which means we're going to review uh, tonight's movie, starting with Colin. Still recording, right? Colin, what did you think? 
for tonight's movie? The Fanatic. The answer is yes, Sean. It is the number. Okay, good. Um, I was prepared for the worst, I guess. That was the thing. Uh, you know, this movie sounded like kryptonite. It was like, just don't go anywhere near it. It's awful. Um, I was kind of surprised that I didn't think it was awful. I was, uh, I thought John Travolta, I mean, you know, this is the thing. When you get these guys who are movie stars, we kind of, uh, when they get into this late phase of their career, we kind of give them the like, oh, you know, it's like they're doing these things just for the paycheck or, you know, but they're still like movie stars, you know, they still know how to bring it. They still, you know, um, I think his problem here is uh, Durst uh, isn't um, quite as accomplished as he needs to be to actually land some of the scenes. Like uh, the first scene Probably. where the 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 main uh, antagonism between Moose and Hunter is supposed to happen. Right. It didn't. It it did. It felt you know arbitrary. It felt like it escalated too quickly. Right. He didn't quite calibrate. There it has correctly. to be friction because there has to be friction. Or yeah, the rest of the movie happens. So. Not because it naturally progresses. A right. misunderstanding somehow yeah. would cause it. No, it just ramps up because it's supposed to. There were several scenes like that where it was like, yeah. okay, this is just this is an inexperienced director. Which again, in those scenes, I kept thinking of Joker and going like, oh, Todd Fields actually is pretty good because <laughs> <laughs> he pulled these things off, mm. you know, and landed it. But it, I don't think it, I don't think that I can blame Travolta or Sawa. Mm. Uh, I just think that they're kind of running without like a, a fine tuned. Um, direction you know like somebody giving them like no no no, let's let's calibrate this let's go here and you know whatever um the movie still got problems so i mean i think i am going to recommend the movie i think yeah ultimately surprise (laughs) you know i I am am very surprised surprised, honestly (laughs) yeah because i mean like i said i sat down there non-ironically and watched it and i'm like well this isn't that bad I have seen a lot worse. We were all prepared to white knuckle yeah, through yeah, this yeah. shit. Yeah. Or yeah. laugh at it. Yeah. You know? yeah, we really were. And it's like, well, it's not really, you know, a horribly uh, it, what he's doing. And maybe maybe you'll disagree with that. Maybe, you know, if you're primed and you go into it going like this is going to be one of the most uh, goofy, trashiest performances of all time. Uh, there is, you know, obviously what he's doing is like a very um, odd character so you know you can laugh at it i suppose but i don't think that's the intention of the movie it's uh it is done pretty earnestly i just you know does it feel like it's in bad taste maybe in in a lot of ways just because it's trying to cast uh fans as these kind of crazy uh off balance mentally unstable people for durst and bad taste no no way <laughs> no you gotta be kidding me colin but i think we covered that and because we know that if you don't make them a, a more extreme version like then you don't get well, your you movie don't have, yeah and yeah. you don't get your yeah. quote-unquote horror movie because then the it. person doesn't go the full distance and right. take you hostage they can't right, they you know? can't be a rational person right but that's to, the for thing, the movie to work yeah that's what i keep coming back to it's like it's a horror movie for the celebrities who could possibly be in this position. It's Mm. not a horror movie for you and me. Yeah. Yeah. Who's not going to relate to it's true. Yeah. Who am I in this? If I ever get famous, Mm. you know, then I'll have to deal with this situation. We'll talk off mic about something, but (laughs) I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. (laughs) Oh, I think I know what you're thinking too. (laughs) I think we all just had a little telepathic connection. (laughs) Well, I mean, it ultimately, I guess it's the final word. I would say that I would recommend you check out them. And like, well, okay, I'm going to back that up. There's problems, a bewildering and baffling ending, but, uh, and some other choices of narration or whatever <laughs> throughout. But ultimately, I was entertained enough to recommend it. Holly, what'd you think? Um, I, uh, I I disagree with with some of the things that you said, Colin. I I think this movie is is pretty. Um, I think it's trash. I think it's pretty bad. Um, but also, why wouldn't you watch it? Like <laughs> that's why you should yeah, watch it, right? Like, why wouldn't you? Like so it's entertaining the, I think trash. I think the directing is absolute shit. I think the writing is terrible. I think. It looks like a music video, and if, like we said, if Limp Biscuit was a movie, this would be it. Like it just, it it has a Limp Biscuit flavor, and it's hot dog flavored water. <laughs> but it's thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Wait, no, no, the, no chocolate, the chocolate starfish. starfish. Yeah, starfish and yes. hot dog yeah. flavored water. Yeah. <laughs> This movie, uh, this movie is rolling, terrible. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Stop! Oh God! Stop! So sorry. Oh, God! My brother listened to Limp Biscuits so much. Um, we all did. Let's, yeah. Let's not. We whatever. can't deny it. It is what it is. Um, yeah, this movie it sucks. It's trash, but it's so fucking entertaining. I, I you gotta watch it. You have to. It's an experience. Like it's hilarious. I, I think. I honestly think Devin Sawa did a pretty good job. I think John Travolta didn't make terrible choices with mo- with a lot of this movie. I think it was a lot of the direction and the writing that really made it horrendous. I, I, I think they actually did pretty good with what they had. Um, yeah, it's terrible. It's ridiculous. And you should absolutely watch it. Sean. I really was preparing for the worst. Right. And I, it, it was. I'm. I think I'm right in Colin's corner with this. I, it, the the downfall of this is it's not extremely well written. Um, I mean, there's there's the problems with that. It's uh, you know, um, uh, and he doesn't have a lot of uh, a chops as a director. So there are some weak spots when it comes to that. But Travolta's giving it all he's got. Um, Sawa's doing everything in this. I was. Uh, I, Jesus, I, it was effective. Um, I was yelling at the screen. I was engaged in most parts. There's some bad choices made, obviously. Um, but uh, I'm kind of shocked yeah. that I'm going to sit here and <laughs> recommend that you should watch this movie mm-hmm, because right? it. I I, I, I want to know what other people think of this. Like I'm like, is she real? Well, what is the point of the narration? <laughs> well, that's what a good take. Yeah, yeah. The fact that she has wings in the illustration at the end. Yeah. It's an angel, angelic character yeah. who mm-hmm. watches over him. With his hook hand. And could be, yeah. <laughs> with, his, yeah. with his hook hand. And his eye patch. Yeah. Yeah. He's a patch. pirate in yeah. the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Um, I, I, this, this movie got me. Fuck. I want to watch it again. Just to like iron out any questions I have about it, but I also wouldn't mind talking to other people about this. Yeah. Holy shit! I recommend you go watch the fanatic. <laughs> Never. Th- I didn't think I was gonna say that. I really didn't think I was no, gonna say that. But I know. You, I. It's in the, one way or another. It's entertaining. So there you go. Mm-hmm. I recommend you go watch the fanatic. Yep. The second time you watch it, you got to suffer through two sets of credits. That's hubris. Right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> well, that yeah. is there are there's a lot of credits. Fast credits. forward through them. Uh, it's, it would have been a sin if this was a minute longer. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, say that, I'll say that right now. They got out enough where I was just leaning forward, just being like, "Huh, yeah, it's <laughs> going." <on?" laughs> but I, you know, again, a minute longer, and it wouldn't. Yeah, you know, the uh, the facade would have gone away. So, but yeah, I recommend it. <laughs> Go watch the fanatic, Michaela. Yeah, with these pile on movies, you know, I always want to suss out for myself: is it really as bad as people say it is, or is it just fun to hate on it? Mm-hmm. And like, obviously, this movie is so easy to hate on. There yeah. is so much without even seeing it that you can just make fun of. You know, um, that being said, all those people on the internet making fun of it, none of them have seen it. Right. You know, none of them have seen mm-hmm. it. Just judging by the box office alone, nobody's fucking seen this movie that's hating on <laughs> True. it. True. So. Um, if you're going to, uh, this is why hate watching is a thing. If you're going to hate on something, at least be informed enough to know what you're hating on. Right. So I yes. was like, worst case scenario, we'll be well informed to dunk on it. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. I was like, I didn't bring it cause it's a, pr- I thought it was a good movie. I brought it because like one way or another, there's going to be a lot of shit to talk about here. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I was really like everyone just keeps throwing around the word the word unwatchable with this movie. It is not unwatchable. No. It is very watchable. We've watched yeah. way more unwatchable things. Like yeah. I that's clearly people who haven't watched it saying that, right? Like it's very watchable. It was very entertaining. It's a bad movie. It has fundamental writing problems and directing problems and editing problems. Mm-hmm. The cinematography was actually better than I expected. I thought, like, yes, it's very music video stylized, but, like, I didn't expect it to have any style. Right. So yeah. it had something going for it. Um, and, like, there was m- moments where I, like, felt relatable things, just being someone that goes to a convention a lot and stuff. I was like, oh, fuck, I do know what that feels like. Or, like, uh, so there's a scene, and uh, I sa- have it saved to our Instagram, so you can go check it out in the beginning, where Moose is wearing this, like, one-of-a-kind shirt that he talks about that he had made <laughs> out of, like, and the pattern is, like, this, like, retro kind of, like, a monster, like, posters from, like, 30s and 40s, and it's a button-down shirt, and I put it on the Instagram story, and while we were watching the movie... I said, that's actually a really cool shirt. And my <laughs> husband texted me while watching the movie and said, you know you have that same pattern on a pair of pants, right? 
<laughs> so I mean, how much can Please I really hate on this movie, knowing I find the shirt and wear yeah, the combo the whole outfit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I uh, know, you know, th- th- what does that say about me? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got to recommend it. I was like, like Michaela, yeah, from yeah, now on. yeah. yeah. I, it's like. You know, is it a problematic movie? I don't know if that's really for me to determine. Um, I definitely expect it to be way more problematic and yeah, unwatchable. I sure. think John Travolta held restraint at times, and I think that he did a really good job at finding the nuance and playing a character like that. Um, obviously, there was stuff that is just like, oh, Fred Durst wrote that line, and like it doesn't fit in at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's too bad because... like. Comparing it with Joker is interesting because it does make you wonder, had this been in, like, the hands of, like, a real movie director, if we'd be taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Fred Durst is the reason we don't take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. because yeah. it's not so. Travolta, it's not Sawa, that we're all yeah. fine with. Yeah. It's yeah. Fred Durst. And, yeah. like, you know. It's a little bit Travolta. Yeah. Well, well but, like, he's <laughs> an actor, though. That's still, like his you job. Said, they're still I mean, movie yeah. stars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the writing is still bad. Yeah, exactly. It's you know. still, a, still a new metal artist writing a movie. Yeah. You know? So that's the thing. Like, that's why I'm like, in a parallel universe where, like, you know, literally anyone in Hollywood that's not Fred Durst writes this movie. How do we receive it? Yeah. And I think it's interesting, guys, going into award season, just think about how we talk about Joker and think about how that could be the fanatic. Yeah. But you got to check it out. Watch the fanatic. I And I I legitimately want people to watch it and write in and like Sean said, I want to yeah. know what you think. I want to know yeah. what you think. I want to know what you think. Yeah. I want to talk about this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Jesus. Guys, we approved that I movie. I can't believe Free that. Free approved. Yeah. Wow. All right. I, 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 I'm I, I, shocked. I was going to say, I want to go through all tomorrow. the movies we watched and look at all the ones where somebody said, nah, you shouldn't watch yeah. this, and be like, we recommended The, the Fanatic. fanatic. <laughs> all of us. I expected you guys to all hang me out to dry for this shit, and I was like, I'm going to get it I tonight. Was gonna I was happen. like, I'm going to get wow. destroyed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen next week. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Jesus. All right. Colin. Yeah, uh, what are we watching next week? Well, I had a plan for next week. It's all winter time, but now I've been watching a whole bunch of giallo movies. Oh boy, that's right. So we're going with Italian horror films. But the, here's the thing: I've always wanted. I want to bring like giallos to the freak show, but I think we need to have a baseline. And I don't know if we've all seen. So we're going to watch Dario Argento's Deep Red uh, next week, okay. for Fonda Rosso, and uh, and talk about it. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.